Oh, can you hear me now? We had to change your setting. Can you hear me now? It was just was it a, was it ten seconds of a ten seconds of silent film? Is that what happened? <laughs> can you guys hear me now? Are we good? I wait. I still have no sound. We're we're waiting for the chat to catch up and let's see what happens. Yes, yes, beautiful. What's up, guys? Now you can hear me. What's going on, everybody? Um, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for letting me know. I'm glad I was paying attention to the chat. Uh, we had to reset some settings. I actually restarted my Wi-Fi right before I came in, so that's probably what reset. But thank you all so much for joining me in the in the studio of ever changing lighting in the background. Let me know if if the if the purplish bluish look. Is too much. We're trying to get it going. We're trying to make it look fairly professional. We've already got some super chats. We're going to hit on those uh, at first, but I want to see what you guys are saying in the chat from Lance uh, to Sour Lemons, uh, asking about severance. Sour Lemons, we'll talk about severance here in a little bit. And he says, Austin, you should cover my work shift so I can come home and nap today. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, Andy. I feel that. And to all you guys who are letting me know about the sound in the chat, thank you so much. We can hear it now. Um, hey, Austin, what's up, guys? Getting in the chat and seeing who all is here. And some happy Easters across the board. Happy Easter to everybody who is spending a little portion of their Easter uh, to, <laughs> to hang out with me. Someone says, why are you talking in an American accent? I, You know, that's just, that's just how it goes. It's a Kentucky accent. That's because that's where I'm from. Uh, but like I said, we've got some super chats. We'll get into my little, go we'll talk about my Philadelphia trip, how that went, uh, what my weekend with Sean Chandler was like, and how he was the worst person to spend a weekend with. No, just it's it's the opposite of that. We had a great time together. Uh, we'll talk about all of those things. Uh, but I want to get the, to the super chats before they leave. Stumbo's Media Outlet. What's going on, Ian? Austin, uh, Austin, what's up, buddy? Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Will you be ranking the Jurassic Park movies before Dominion? Hope to join you on Patreon soon. And if you guys are over on Patreon, you saw the announcement just a little bit before this went out that we will be doing a companion stream right after this live stream over on Patreon. That way, um, it's more of an intimate experience. We'll have less people on there. You guys can hold your questions if you're a part of the Patreon, unless you just want to send a super chat. In that case, I appreciate it. But we'll be over on Patreon right after this uh, with a nice little video that I posted this morning. But yes, I, I will absolutely do a tier list for the Jurassic Park movies, 100%, but it will be after I see the new one. As soon as I see it, I'll update my tier ranking all of that will hopefully come out uh, around that same weekend. We have Michael with the Super Chat, but thank you for the Super Chat. Michael with the Super Chat supporting the channel. I appreciate it, my friend. How is your Easter Sunday? He is risen. It is fantastic so far, Michael. Woke up, got to sleep in for the first time in like three weeks. Didn't have to really work on anything too hard. Yesterday felt like a work day because I made so many videos, uh, but today I plan on relaxing and finishing our taxes because we're a little late on that. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for all of the feedback. Let me know if the audio is okay because I know we had some uh, we had some had some issues at the beginning here. If it sounds good, we'll keep going. If it doesn't, I'll try to make some changes. We have um, uh, someone says you look Polish. I am not Polish, as far as I know, but we'll have to see. We'll we'll, we'll look into that. What's the What's the thing that you, the family tree thing? Uh, what's the, the 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 thing that you pay for? I don't know what it's called, but I'll, I might do that after this. Is, <laughs> to see. Um, AJ Taylor says, at a Friday night trio of Clute Cure and Identity and James Mangold made a slept on classic with the latter. What a film twist. Yeah, the only one out of those three that I've seen is actually uh, uh, Cure. I, I've, I haven't seen the other two, so I can't speak upon them. I enjoyed Cure. It's one of those movies that's not for everyone, absolutely. But I'm curious to see the other one. Man, what a what a film trio that is, though, AJ. My goodness. And so I assume um, uh, you said made a classic with the latter. I assume that's your favorite of the bunch. So let me let me know down below, all of you guys, what movie is worth watching out of the two that I haven't seen. That's interesting. I always love your Friday night trios, AJ. Um, let's see. We have Andy says. I still think that was an imposter and not the real Sean Chandler IDK. You know, spent the whole weekend with him. I still don't know if it was the real Sean Chandler. So he made it very convincing as we were going. Um, what's better, Moonfall or Morbius? I'm going to say Morbius, but they both stink. 
Um, are you going to watch the bad guys? Yes, I actually plan on watching the bad guys early this week and having a review hopefully out around the Wednesday mark. We'll have to see. What are your plans on TV tier lists? You know, I, I don't have any specific plans for the rest of the month on a TV tier list. I, I may have a movie tier list or two coming out, uh, but I'll try to do my recap at the end of the month. I missed that last month with the television shows uh, just because we got so busy towards the end. We have a super chat from Jason. Jason, thank you for your support. Thank you for the question. Uh, hey, Austin, my top two series of all time are Dark and Avatar The Last Airbender. Wow, oh, Wow. Do either both rank in your top 10? If so, where do they place? Cheers from Western New York. What's up, Jason? Thanks for being here, my friend. Boy, oh boy. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, 100% in my top 10 TV shows of all time. Absolutely. You know, I haven't thought about it since Dark had its final season. That tells you how long it's been since I've made that list. But I will tell you, at this point, Dark may be right outside if not looking in that top 10. Could crack the top 10. I'd have to think about it, but yeah, definitely in that range. I think Dark is one of the best shows on Netflix. That and Mindhunter, my two favorites. Uh, but Avatar, 100%, maybe in my top five. That's, that's one of my favorites. I mean, look, come on. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. We got Aang in the Avatar state over here. I had, to, I had to order that. Did a little auction. That was pretty fun. Uh, so yeah, that's one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, let's see. Austin, did you watch Uma with Sandra Oh? I, you know, I didn't, Zach. I, that was one that I wanted to get to, never did. Same thing with Father Stu this weekend. Wanted to get to it, haven't yet. But um, like I said this morning on Patreon, a lot of these reviews that I miss out on, they'll be over on that page. Um, I actually just watched the brand new Chris Pine movie on Amazon, so expect a review for that over on my Patreon. So if you guys don't have me on Patreon, we did, we're doing a full revamp. Um, we've already started this morning, and uh, I'll be doing a lot of the reviews that I don't get to on YouTube over on there. So if you want to know what it is, patreon.com slash Austin Burke. And uh, like I said, companion live stream coming right after this. Okay. Everything Everywhere All at Once is now number one on Letterboxd. Oh my goodness. I know, Carrot and Friends. That is crazy. That is crazy. Um, you know, and I'm not saying it's my favorite movie of all time because it's not, but the more I watch it, the more I love it. And I, I do think it deserves to be in that range of the top spot. It's it's a phenomenal movie and I don't see a lot of people not liking it. So that's always a good, sh uh, a good sign. Uh, have you seen Better Call Saul? If so, season six tomorrow. I know, Ace. I'm still trying to figure out how to cover it. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to cover it, but definitely a review at the end of the season. Maybe more than that. We'll, we'll just have to see. Probably a spoiler review as well at the end of the season. I uh, love the content, my friend. Thank you, Horrorbite. Do you think Mindhunter will ever come back on Netflix? Oh, oh, it hurts. It breaks my heart just to talk about it because I'm not sure, Horrorbite. I'm not sure. I want it to. I, I really want it to, but I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It, it's uh, the first two seasons are magnificent. The the flow, David Fincher, pure David Fincher. We'll have to see. I hope so in the near future. Arnov says, Austin, I'm dying to see your favorites list expanded. I assume you mean over on Letterboxd. Um, yeah, I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it in a while. I need to get back to it. Uh, maybe, maybe. We've got a top 50, though. We've got a good top 50 that continues to shift and change. So if you guys don't have me on Letterboxd, uh, you can check out my favorite movies of all time over on there. And I may do an update video sometime soon. Noah, what's up, Noah? Uh, happy Easter. I'm going to Disney World for a week in two weeks. Can't wait to see Doctor Strange and the Northman. Maybe massive talent if I have time. Noah, if you're a Nicolas Cage fan, I think it's worth it 100%. You guys saw my review. One of my favorite movies of the year. Loved it. I see the Northman, and I, I saw somebody ask that a couple of minutes ago. I actually see the, the Northman. Um, woo! I see the Northman early tomorrow, super early. So expect a review for the Northman from me tomorrow at some point, maybe in the evening. I can't wait. I missed my screening a couple of days ago. We're going to get there now, and, and I am super pumped. And I'm pumped about the fact that I don't have to drive too far for the Northman. That is awesome, because normally I have to drive like three hours. Uh, thank you for the question, Noah. Are you looking forward to any films? Of, oh, I haven't even thought about the Cannes Film Festival. What is your favorite movie so far this year, and what's your remaining most anticipated for the year. Uh, I need to look at the schedule, John, for, for the Cannes Film Festival. I've seen a couple of movies, but I need to kind of get my my stuff in order for that one. Um, but I'm, I'm telling you one thing. My favorite movie of the year, it, it is a competition. All right? Not a lot of people thought it was a competition. It is a competition between 
the Batman and everything everywhere. I'm not going to sit back and say the Batman is, is you know, masterclass filmmaking like everything everywhere, but it's pretty daggone close and it's pretty daggone good. So those are my top two right now of the year. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough competition between the two, but it's a really good top, uh, top 10. Honestly, I love my entire top 10 and we're only in April right now. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I'm loving these movies already, what left is that? We still have Babylon. We still have Scorsese's film. We have possible David Fincher movie. It could be a, a phenomenal back half of the year. So I'm very excited to see where we end up. Uh, thank you for the super chat, John. We have Austin Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul. Definitely. Well, it's actually really close. We'll see how Better Call Saul ends up. I, I'm still going to go Breaking Bad. That's my favorite show of all time. But Better Call Saul is phenomenal. I mean, there are Really no massive issues. I absolutely love it. Um, let's see. We have... Um, I'm seeing Sonic 2 today from Ace. Go. Good, good luck. Have fun. It's it's definitely a fun little movie. Um, we've got... Someone said flip. <laughs> Are you doing a flip? I don't understand. Uh, when are uh, you doing a Michael Bay tier list with amulets? That's something that I think could be for Patreon. I, I decided not to do one um, on the YouTube channel just because... I didn't have time to rewatch all of the Michael Bay films, and I feel like when I don't get time to rewatch the movies that we're talking about, it's it's almost not fair because my opinions change over time, and, and maybe I feel one way, like I haven't seen The Rock in like five years, and I love that movie. It would probably be near the top, but maybe I've shifted opinions. But since it's, you know, we're talking about Patreon, I think that would be an okay thing for that because we're not giving as definitive of an opinion and uh, everybody on Patreon's pretty nice. So, <laughs> so uh, let's see. We have, speaking of Avatar The Last Airbender, have you thought about doing the worst movies based off cartoon shows? No, Frankie, but that's a pretty cool idea. I haven't thought about that. Uh, maybe worst video game movies, worst movies based off TV shows. Those kind of lists are, are, are really fun. Uh, that's a really cool idea. Um, we have Ace again. Is Batman in your top 50 now? Uh, no, I, it's too soon for that. It's too soon. I. It's a great movie. I love it. But it's one of those movies that you have to sit on. And, and you know, it's kind of like when people throw around the word masterpiece off the bat. And, and I appreciate that. I respect those opinions. I can't do that personally. I can't say, well, this movie's a masterpiece and I've only seen it once. For me, a movie has to grow over time. You have to sit with it. You have to rewatch it. You have to think about it. Uh, and that's why you don't see me give a lot of 10 out of 10s off the bat. Most of the time, it takes a couple of watches to get there. So, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where I am, especially with, with putting the Batman in my top 50. Uh, but it's a great movie, and I absolutely love it. Is there any chance you could get new merch? Yes. Uh, as you mentioned, you are planning on new merch after 100K. Yes, and that's another part of what we're doing with, with Patreon. And the first people to see those will be the people on Patreon. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're working on that. I mentioned in my, my Patreon video this morning that I have someone working on some merch. And it's pretty cool. It's not my logo. It's not my name. It's something different. So I'm definitely working on it. And you will be seeing all of this kind of become fresh once it's, once it's out of the way. We have... Uh, we have, hey, will you be reacting to more Indian movies or series? My, uh, Yes, I, I've been recommended a lot of movies and series as of late. I know the new one in theaters, it is a part two, and I haven't seen part one. So I'm like, there's no need for me to see part two because I haven't seen part one. I wanted to see RRR. If I see it, if I see it, it will be a letterboxed and Patreon. Um, but it's just such a busy time, and it's hard to go see a three-hour movie without knowing you're going to do a YouTube review. Um, so, but, but, but definitely there's, there's a beast. I, I watched the beast trailer. That's one that I, I definitely want to try to review on my channel. Uh, we've got some great super chat questions, guys, and we're going to get into mine and Sean's trips. So, so stay tuned for that. We'll talk about it here in just a second. I want to get to some of these, um, super chats though, before I miss them. Fred says, Hey Austin, if you could pick one director to direct an MCU movie, one that still hasn't, who would you pick and what movie would you pick? Oh, oh, the movie's tough. I'd, I'd have to sit at, uh, sit and think about that. Oh, man, that, that's that's really tough. Well, I don't want to go with Damon Giselle, Martin Scorsese, Eden Diva Love. I don't want to go with one of those guys. Now, David Fincher is in that camp, but David Fincher doing a darker, like a, a Punisher Moon Knight type character, I think would be super cool. I don't know if it would ever happen, but I think that would be interesting. Another one that I was thinking about as of late is uh, 
And we've always said Christopher McQuarrie would be cool for DC, for Superman, since he worked with Henry Cavill. But how about Christopher McQuarrie in the MCU doing a more grounded superhero film? You know, think Captain America the Winter Soldier, just find a different hero, obviously, with McQuarrie's touch. I think that would be super cool. I feel like McQuarrie could rock a superhero movie. And maybe that's not a... Maybe that's not a... a even one that we've had mention of. Maybe that's someone completely different, a C-level or D-level superhero. Uh, regardless, I, I think Macquarie is a great name to throw out. Fred, that's a heck of a question. Those are the kind of questions that I like to see. Footy Drunk says, are you hyped for the Northmen? Oh, my God, yes. Oh, my God, y'all. I'm, I'm so excited for tomorrow. Oh, get up bright and early. Get pumped up. Man, oh, man. Uh, hey, Austin, have you seen any good comedies recently besides The Lost City Cash? Yes, well, everything everywhere. I mean, that was a rock-solid, fantastic, absolutely hilarious comedy, self-aware, you know, Tropic Thunder-esque. I know a lot of people wanted to say that about um, The Bubble. The Bubble was like trying to do Tropic Thunder. That movie wasn't very good. Massive talent is great. And honestly... Everything Everywhere is a great comedy. So two great comedies, both in theaters right now, that I think are 100% worth a watch. Zach says, have you seen the outfit? Yes, I did see the outfit, Zach. I talked about it on my March tier list because I didn't get to review uh, on, the, on the channel. So go check out my March tier list. You get a very brief review, and you see where it ranks for me on the month, and it actually ranked very high. I, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Um Yes, that, that's, a, that's a great question, Zach, because that's one of my favorites of the year so far. Hey, Austin, you know I've been asking for a long time. Please explain <laughs> explain 2001 A Space Odyssey ending. Oh, that's a well, that's a tough question to get to during a live stream, man. <laughs> that's, that's one that I'd have to sit and ponder and think about. And and I have my thoughts, but, but this may not be the appropriate place for that. That's a question that could allow me to get onto Patreon, which we've mentioned multiple times in this live stream, and, you know, maybe rock a 2001 Space Odyssey um, um, spoiler review over on there. So, like you guys know, we're doing the Patreon revamp um, big time. And I posted a video this morning. So, after this live stream, if you just showed up, I'm, I know I'm repeating myself for everybody else. We're going to be doing a Patreon companion live stream. So, everybody over there, join me. We can have more of an intimate conversation, some some cooler discussions. And, um, and and this week, we're going to be starting with my brand new series over on Patreon. So thank you to everyone who follows me over on there. And if you are here, first of all, we've had some great super chats. Thank you for all the super chats today. But the best thing to do, and y'all know, is to like the video. Not because I'm sitting here going, hey, you got to like the video because you think I'm cool. Even if you don't think I'm cool, the YouTube algorithm is changing it loves its likes so if you guys want to push this video out help me push this video out the best way to do that is to drop that thumbs up and that's the case on any of my videos you all you see on youtube videos always perform better when they have more likes and i'm the kind of guy that like hates to ask about those types of things so uh <laughs> so every time i ask i feel bad i feel kind of icky inside but i appreciate the love i appreciate the uh just the, the support you guys give me nonetheless. Um, so if you're here and you want to drop the thumbs up, that would be fantastic. And any type of comment or anything like that helps. We Sean and I just talked about the YouTube algorithm during our panel. And it's ever-changing, ever-shifting. But one thing that really matters is likes, comments, and watch time. The longer you guys watch, the longer you're here, the more YouTube sees that and says, well, we're going to push your video. So all of those things mean the absolute world to me. And I just appreciate all the questions. But I want to get back to some of these questions. Then we'll talk about Sean and I's uh, little trip that we had. All right. Uh, Jedediah says, Happy Easter, Austin. What's up, Jedediah? Thank you for being here, my friend. Any Christian movie recommendations? Love, I Can Only Imagine 2018. That's one of my parents' favorite movie. Um, you know, I grew up with a lot of those, like, facing the giants type of films. And, and I understand the stigma behind Christian movies is a lot of them are... A lot of them are, are, are kind of rough around the edges, but that's actually one that I really like, Facing the Giants. And then what was the one where the kid fell into the ice? Uh, Breakthrough? I believe it was called Breakthrough. I really enjoyed that movie. And there was one that came out last year that everyone said was good. Oh, and the um, apparently the new Zachary Levi film 
uh, where he plays Kurt Warner. Was that kind of a Christian movie? That's kind of what I heard. So yeah, those are some good recommendations. And and uh, a classic one for me is Facing the Giants. That's, that's one that I grew up with. I'm just a big sports guy. So anytime I get a sports movie, I'm going to love it. But I haven't seen it in a while. So that's one of those that um, is is rough to recommend. So Jedediah, uh, Breakthrough is probably a, a, a better recommendation for me. Mason, Mason, what's up, Mason? Who was in Philadelphia? Philly was great, man. Launched my own channel. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, just working on improving the quality. Anyways, uh, have you, or do you, or have you watched The Walking Dead, Mason? Again, nice to meet you this weekend, my friend. Uh, we had a great time with the panel. I'll show you guys some of those pictures here in just a second. Uh, and I saw your picture on Instagram uh, starting your, your own channel. I believe it was a Blu-ray video, right? I think it was a Blu-ray video. Awesome stuff. Thank you for letting us know that you started that. It means the world to Sean and I. Um, the Walking Dead, you know, that's one where I started, I enjoyed, and I just fell off. It wasn't necessarily due to the quality. It was more so due to just, and the quality did decrease just a little bit in the middle seasons. But it was more so I had so much to watch and so much to focus on. And Walking Dead was hard to cover because it was weekly. And I, you guys know I like to cover the big series and the big shows. So I fell off of it, uh, and I haven't came back on since. Now, I did hear that it improved. I did hear it got better, but it's, it may be too late for me. I don't know if I'll ever come back on board. Uh, sorry, Mace. I know why everybody loves Walking Dead. It's just it's so hard when you, when you watch so many things. And But maybe one of these days. And I've also heard Fear the Walking Dead is really, really good. Um, great question, though. Let's get into some of the normal questions. We'll get back into the Super Chats. I'll be watching the outfit soon. Definitely worth it. How many hours a day do you usually watch stuff? Well, let's do... I, I Here's how I like to do it. Per week, TV shows, I usually devote 20 to 30 hours per week for TV shows. Okay? For movies, we're talking... What are we talking? F we'll, we'll say five movies a week. That's around you know, 10, 12 hours, uh, for movies. So that's 40 hours a week just for watching content. And then I have to edit my videos and that's what takes a lot of time. Cause editing usually takes one to two hours per video. You are talking five to six videos a week. You know, somebody asked me once, they said, Austin, you know, calculate how many hours you work per week. And I'm like, wow, I've actually never, never thought about it like that. And then I realized I was overwhelming myself when I did that. <laughs> so I, I've had to scale back just a little bit just for my mental health. Uh, but it, it's it's not as bad as it used to be. It's still a lot. It requires patience. But I can't complain because I love you guys. I love what I do. I love what we do on this channel. And it's still fun. Even though I do it a lot and I have been doing it a lot, it's still fun. But it's a lot of hours for watching content. 40 to 50 per week. Um, do you listen to Eminem? I love Eminem. I'm a huge Eminem fan. Uh, it's just one of my faves. Can I get a shout out? I have a comedy channel. I'm trying to grow and want to gain some traction. You're one of my favorite YouTubers. I don't know what your content is. I can't speak upon the quality of your content, but I'm going to give a shout out to big man, Fran, man. Anytime you have a YouTuber who's just trying to make it in the biz, um, I think it's important for us to go support. So, if you like Big Man Friends content, I think that's the most important thing. Uh, go check out Big Man Friends channel. Again, don't know what the content is, can't speak upon it, but I appreciate the fact that you are trying to grow a channel and gain some traction. So big shout out to you and a big thank you for being here. Uh, we have a Streamlabs question, so we'll get into that here in just a second, Hunters. Thank you for the Streamlabs. Uh, have you seen Boogie Nights? What are your thoughts? Really great movie. Uh, not my favorite uh, in his filmography, but a really great movie nonetheless. Matt. What are some 10 out of 10s you've given out over the last few years? Woo! Man, that is, uh, man, that's tough. Okay. So 2019 was a biggie. And you're talking, so I guess you're just talking solely 10 out of 10s. Not 9.5s, not 9.8s, a 10 out of 10s. Here's some 10 out of 10s I gave out. And I, I'm not for sure if I'm still at the 100 10 out of 10 on Uncut Gems, but I, it's, it's close, right? But ones that I'm firm in. 1970, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Blade Runner 2049, Logan, and 
that's it. Um, j- we're talking solely 100%. Oh, and Marriage Story. I gave Marriage Story a 10 out of 10. So Uncut Jim's Marriage Story, 1917. Uh, and then right behind those was was Parasite. Parasite was like a 96, 98. God, what a good year for movies. <laughs> oh my God. 2019, y'all. Come on now. But those are the ones that I can think of. Maybe I've missed a couple. If you guys know some that I've given 10 out of 10s to, let me know down below. Uh, hey, Austin, what's your speculation about the release date of the Thor 4 trailer? And what are your thoughts about that movie? If you guys saw mine and Sean's picture that we posted on his Twitter, my Twitter, uh, we were so sad that we didn't get a Thor trailer. Oh, my God. We were sitting there waiting. Sean was in the corner. I'm sitting here like, where's the trailer? It was 9.05, 9.10. We're like, we're not getting one, are we? So I thought it was going to be Monday. I have no clue. I think they're pushing it back. I think the movie's coming out in November. I don't think there's any way in the world you don't give us a trailer within the next month. And maybe they're holding out for Doctor Strange. Maybe there's a big Doctor Strange spoiler that leads us into the new Thor movie. Maybe that's why they're doing it. That's something I actually haven't thought about. So I don't know. I'm not sure. But it stinks that we didn't get one Monday. Really stinks. Uh, when is Father Stu review coming? Uh, like I said, not on not on YouTube. We won't be doing one on YouTube, but definitely on Patreon, 100%. Uh, in my movies that I missed series that I'm starting. So yeah, we'll we'll be doing Father Stu on Patreon, and of course Letterbox. But uh, yeah, video review over on Patreon. Mike, what's up, Mike? What's up, dude? Saw Choose or Die and agree a series would have been better fleshed out character and plot development. In fact, Netflix should just do that. No movies. Just four limited series thoughts. Mike, that's tough. I I don't agree that Netflix shouldn't do movies. I think there are a lot of movies that they've done to where if they were to, you know, expand those into series, I would not like it. Um, especially, well, I just mentioned a movie like Marriage Story, a movie like um, The Irishman, which was essentially a series, but it was a movie. Uh, there have been plenty of films where I, I just like them as films. But, Mike, you, you bring up a good point with some of these films especially the less the less Oscar worthy originals they'll come out and I'm just like you've shortchanged this thing it should have been so much more expanded there's no depth there's no this there's no that and uh it, it becomes just so like ah why why did we get this version of a really cool script and and that's that's what choose or die was for me it's a cool concept I love the idea I love the um you know, ability of the actors to to handle a story like this, but it should have been a series. It fell completely flat in the third act because there was no fleshing out with any of our characters. So, in that way, Mike, I completely agree with you. No movies? I, I don't agree with that. I think, again, I, I go back to a movie like Marriage Story. Like, that's perfection the way it is. I, I would hate if that was a series. But definitely more expanding, fleshing out, less cliche, because we tend to give... TV shows a bit of a, a, a pass compared to movies because there's just more time to develop. Uh, now, sometimes they go on too long, but I'll always take more time for something like that. Um, talking about a while ago, but hey, Mike, thank you for the super chat. It's a great thing to bring up. I think that's important when looking at these streaming shows and and, and films. Uh, talking about the movie a while ago with Zachary Levi, Un- uh, American Underdog. That's the name. I couldn't think of the name. Uh, let's see. We have... My friend obsessed with that show. I'm not entirely sure what show we're talking about. Maybe Avatar. Um, Sorry, guys. I'm just now catching up on all the questions. Some of my favorite DreamWorks films include Shrek 2, Kung Fu Panda 2, How to Train Your Dragon 2, Prince of Egypt. Those are some of my favorites. Some of my favorites. Have you thought about yours for Letterboxd? No, I haven't thought about my favorites, but honestly, all the ones you mentioned, those would be on my list. But we can't just talk about Shrek 2 without Shrek 1. We can't talk about Kung Fu Panda 2 without Kung Fu Panda 1. How to Train Your Dragon 1 and 3. Honestly, Prince of Egypt is a great film. DreamWorks has a great filmography. They've had some busts, 100%, uh, but I'm really excited for the new one. I am. I've heard some good things about it. Thoughts on The Passion of the Cross? Oh, that's, yeah, Brandon, how could I? (laughs) That's like the obvious Christian movie to recommend. Passion of the Christ is really great. Uh, That's definitely, it's hard to watch, okay? But that's definitely one that's like the easiest recommendation. That's my bad for missing that. Hey, Austin, try to imagine a brief plot for a horror movie directed by Christopher Nolan. Ooh, flash flick. Ooh, flash flick. Well, you know, with Christopher Nolan, it has to be a personal story. It has to be a character study. I feel like he wouldn't go supernatural. I feel like Nolan would go more, you know, just 
super intense psychological thriller, but still veer into horror territory. I, I don't know if he could do super. I, I know he could do it, but I don't know if he would do supernatural. That's that's always tough to think about having a director take on something they've never taken on before. It's a good proposal, though. Flash flick. What is Christopher Nolan doing after Oppenheimer? If you did a horror, uh, if you did a horror movie, I would be completely on board for that. All right, let's do let's do Cash's um, let's do Cash's super chat, and then we will absolutely. 100% go over to Streamlabs because I know we have a question over there. All right, Cash says, looks like the second season of Physical is going to hit streaming soon on Apple TV. Will you be reviewing it? I know you mentioned catching up on season one sometime. Also, have you watched Minx? Which one is Minx, Cash? Let me pull out the old trusty IMDB here. Have I watched Minx? I know I haven't watched it, but let's see which one that is. Um... Oh, okay. No, I have not watched Minx. That is HBO Max. And I haven't really heard a ton about that. Oh, I love her. Uh, Ophelia Lovey Bond, is that her name? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, no, I haven't watched Minx. And I haven't caught up on physical. I am so sorry. There's, there's just so much. So, I probably won't be reviewing TV uh, Season 2, Cash. It's also hard because the Apple Plus shows are kind of difficult to keep up with. I need to do more Apple, though. I need to do more Apple. I don't review enough. Severance, I was so sad I missed Severance. I finally caught up on it. Absolutely loved it. One of the best shows of the year. May do a video. Maybe. Eh, maybe. But, um, man, oh, man. I, I really, really, really want to uh, talk about Severance at some point. Maybe I'll catch up on Physical one of these days. Cash, thank you for the great question and, and um, reminding me that I need to watch more Apple shows because I do. Amanda says, what did you eat in Philly? Oh, very cool. I live here. Um, and we have such good food options. Amanda, I'll be completely honest with you. We were so busy. We did a great pizza place, though. What was the pizza place that we ordered? Um, let me see if I can find that, Amanda. Hang on, guys. I know I'm stalling right now because I want to go over and see where we ordered. All right. We've got... Um, I'm going to my history here on my DoorDash because Sean and I, we were dead. We were so tired. And uh, we ended up door dashing while we were in Philadelphia. Let's see here. We've got orders. Okay. And by the way, let me pull up a picture and we can go ahead and get into some of that uh, some of that stuff. There's Here's the best one. You ready? Look at that. Isn't that such a meme? Why? <laughs> Why do I look so mad? Okay. We ate at Wood Street Pizza. That's the name of the place that we ate, Amanda. So if you recognize Wood Street Pizza, we actually really like the pizza. We door dashed it, got um, got some, uh, what did we get the appetizer? Two, uh, some breadsticks, but yeah, the Wood Street Pizza was really, really good. So there's <laughs> it's my favorite picture from Philadelphia. But that's not the only thing. If you guys follow me over on Instagram, you saw Sean and I's photos. We got to meet some great uh, movie personalities, guy at the movies and Burns Reviews and and um, had a great time going to the Rocky Steps, spent some time there. Sean and I ran up the steps like uh, two very interesting tourists. There's me next to the statue. And, of course, our panel that we did. See, there's one of Sean looking very upset while I was talking. <laughs> but, yeah, we had some great feedback from the panel. And uh, there's a little, little selfie of me and Sean. There's Sean sitting in my seat. Wasn't that fun? We, we had such a good time. We were so giddy. We were like two just giddy YouTubers like, Ooh, we need to go on this trip. Uh, but we had such a great time. Great presence. A lot of you guys, maybe even some people watching that showed up. Um, and and here's perfect. Uh, Kristen, what's up, Kristen? Uh, it says, how is the trip with Sean look like fun? It was fun. The only thing that was just, I mean, we were so exhausted was the road trip there and the road trip back. We were going to fly. And then I guess because gas prices are so crazy, the price of plane tickets, absolutely insane, like pure insanity. So we said, we'll just make a road trip out of it. We'll plan out our speech, our, our, our panel there. And we did, and we got to plan and we got to talk about all kinds of things, YouTube and family and, you know, got some great conversation. And now I know Sean so much better than I did. So that was nice, but Overall, it was a great trip. It was a trip that was uh, worth my time, absolutely. You know, didn't get to make a lot of videos together because we were so exhausted, but 
at the end of the day, we got to go to Philadelphia and have some fun, and that's that's all that matters. So to everybody who showed up and that was there, thank you so much for being there. Thank you for showing up and uh, for all of your support, man. That was that was just it was a great time. Um, and I'll get into some of your responses here in a second. I want to make sure I don't miss this super chat from Matt. Matt says, thoughts on Shang-Chi 2. Will he be an Avenger? Matt, I think 100%. I think Shang-Chi is being built to be a huge presence on the Avengers. Uh, but in terms of the sequel, I am hyped out of my mind. We saw that post credit scene with his sister. It looks like she's going to be a big bad, if not the big bad. So you're going to see brother going against sister. It's going to make an interesting family dynamic. I can't wait for Shang-Chi 2, and I 100% think he'll be a big presence in whenever we get the next Avengers movie. All right, we've got, um, I wish you and Sean did vlogs. We did sort of a vlog. Not really, but he did record our trip. We got some of the sites. Um, we got footage, of course, of the panel. So we did something. You guys may be seeing that a little, a little bit soon. Um, hey, Austin. Hey, how you doing? Um, yeah, that, that picture of me, man. I really do. Here, let's go back to it. I look. It's such a good meme. I, I, I think everybody on the Discord made it a meme. Look at that. I just, <laughs> it's just it's, the wrong picture at the wrong time. Isn't that amazing? I just imagine the Toby Maguire, the Bully Maguire music playing. That's incredible. <laughs> All right, we've got. Um, let's see. Are you taller than Sean? No, Sean. He kept saying he was six one. I'm like, bro, you six two, you six two, because I am like right at the six foot mark, and he at least looked two inches taller than me. I'm like, he is definitely six two, or I'm five eleven. But I like to say I'm six foot. So yeah, Sean's taller and his hair was like four inches. So that's just, that's just added like another big um, um, portion that made him look a lot taller than me. You and Zach Pope. I haven't met Zach Pope in person. I have met him um, online. So that would be fun one day for sure. We've got, is there any films Sean recommended to you? We didn't talk about recommendations. We just talked about the movies that we love. Uh, and we got to watch everything, everywhere, all at once together. His first time, my second time. So that was fun, man. We giggled. We giggled so hard <laughs> during that movie. Um, did you visit Patty's Pub, the best bar in Philly? No, I, I, I didn't. We didn't get to go really. I mean, we were so focused on our work. Um, again, it was a business trip, so, uh, that'll be good for taxes, but we were so focused on our work. We were unable to go out and have fun, but Madison and I do plan on going to Philadelphia this year. We're going to make our, our Pittsburgh trip again, hopefully watch my Steelers play, um, and probably lose. Uh, but we're, we're planning on going to Pittsburgh, Hershey, Philadelphia, make a big trip out of it. And I can't wait for that. And then Mike and, and after Mike, we're going to go over to stream labs and get to that question. Cause I know somebody is waiting on me to answer that question. Uh, what are some of your favorite co or multi-directed movies? And do you think this is something that should be done more often? Well, obviously everything everywhere is the most recent example of that. And I think that's a great example because you can feel Normally, you can feel a couple of maybe extra ideas at play when you have multiple directors, and sometimes that's convoluted, that's too much. But mostly, I think it's a good thing. My my best examples that I can think of off the top of my head, Uncut Gems and Good Time, Safety Bros, Everything Everywhere. Uh, man, what would be another what would be another good example of that? That's that's a tough one because most of the time, uh, I guess the, the the Matrix with the Wachowskis. Yeah, that's a great example. That's a great, great example. Uh, so those are kind of the examples I can think of off the top of my head. You know, uh, let's see. I want. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, delay this any longer. Let's go on over to Streamlabs. Let's do a little refresh here and see what our question is on there. Um, as always, we've got great super chats, but. I want to make sure I do not miss this Streamlabs question. So 417 from Jonathan. I know you can't talk about Spider-Man No Way Home because not everyone has seen it, but what are your predictions for the post credits? You can't talk about Spider-Man No Way Home because not everyone has seen it. What are your predictions for the... Ah, as in what happens with... I assume you mean what happens with that character. Well, I mean, at this point, I think most people have seen Spider-Man No Way Home. Um... In terms of, and I think that's how I'll approach it because I don't want to get into specifics. How are they going to handle all of these other universes? And basically, will the Sony-verse ever combine with the MCU? I think that's what you're getting at. After Morbius? Ooh, I, just, I, just, I, I don't know what they're doing after Morbius because Morbius was such a bust, man. It was such a bust. And 
that post credit scene was so just, eh. So, you know, the theory was, is Andrew's Spider-Man going to be in the Sony-verse? Is he going to be the Spider-Man in the Venom-verse? I'm like, I, I just, I don't know after Morbius because do they just ignore Morbius? Do they ignore those post credit scenes? Ah, Sony just kind of like, man, you had something. You had something. You didn't ruin it, but you kind of like, ugh. So, I'm curious. I, I don't know. I hope we see Toby and Andrew back. I'm just, I'm curious about where that goes, Jonathan. But it's a good, it's an interesting question. It's an interesting question for sure. Um, Tom Hardy says, Russos are up and down. Some good, bad, some bad. Um, you know, I, I I didn't hate Cherry like I know a lot of people hated Cherry. I didn't hate I I actually thought they had some, some, some bad, weird ideas for sure. Um, their Marvel stuff for me is all fantastic. Their Marvel stuff is all fantastic. Their comedies before Marvel, I wasn't all there on, you know. But TV-wise, Community's awesome. So the Russos crushed it with Community. Their their comedy movie, eh, Cherry, was up and down, you know, a little shaky. So I'm curious to see what they do next, but they are a, a great example of a duo, which I should have thought about a while ago. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Oh, and the Coen brothers. Why didn't I? Yeah, that's that's easy. That's easy. Coen Brothers are awesome. Um, yeah, guys. What, <laughs> sometimes these questions on the spot, man. I, it's hard to think of everything. It's hard to think of everything. Let's see. Um, long time no see from Jack's pool. Sorry I missed your streams the last few months. Do not ever apologize for missing. I know people are busy. I know people have things to do. I mean, today's Easter, for goodness sakes. It's also my brother's birthday. So happy birthday to my brother. April 17th, he is... Um, a 2000 baby. Uh, he turns 22 today. So happy birthday to my bro. You guys will see me post on Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram. Um, but if you'd like to wish my brother a happy birthday, when I do post on Instagram, please wish him a happy B-Day. My bro, he doesn't like to make a big deal out of things. Like That's that's also my Instagram handle and my Twitter. He doesn't like to make big a big deal out of things, but I like to make a big deal out of his birthday. So uh, let's see. Um, uh, why can't I spell today? Why can't I spell any day? Big man. Friend. <laughs> uh, which director do you want to come back? Oh man. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Well, in a way, Cronenberg's making a comeback this year. We saw that, we saw that new Cronenberg trailer. So I guess that's my easy answer. That's my easy answer. It looks interesting, man. I don't know what it's going to be. I have no idea. Uh, but it looks fascinating footy drunk uh footy drunk I, I think i answered this earlier you may have left but yes i am super hyped i see you tomorrow i'm very excited and all the happy birthday wishes i'm gonna have to show him this happy birthday austin's little bro 22 years old that means i'm old that means i'm almost 27 oh wow <laughs> We're getting up there, guys. Uh, Macha Paca says, if you enjoyed Spencer, you got to watch Jackie. Film of the decade for me. Portman deserved her second Oscar. She and the whole movie are no perfect. I will dev. I still haven't seen Jackie. I would definitely take that into consideration. Um, Spencer was awesome, man. We, we were just talking to someone the other day, Madison and I, who didn't like Spencer. And Madison and I is like, Oh no, it's so good. We try to describe why it was so good. It's hard to get that. <laughs> it's hard to get that description across. Um, man, oh man, I am uh I, I'm in love with that movie. So that that's the kind of work that I really appreciate, that artistic type of work. Great super chat, great recommendation. Thank you for that. Carter the movie boy, will you give me a shout out? I'm recording this for TikTok. Hey, what's up, TikTok? Yes, absolutely. Carter, the movie boy. Shout out to, I guess, both TikTok and YouTube, your channel. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, but thank you so much for uh, being a content creator and hopefully making that presence known in this space. Uh, if you guys would like to have somebody fun to follow, Carter, the movie boy. What's up, TikTok? How, how you doing? I'm trying the TikTok game. It's it's slowly but surely coming together. So if you guys want to follow me on TikTok, uh, absolutely, Carter, the movie boy. Thank you for the super chat. Um, just cu curious, how do you qualify for getting screeners, YouTube subscribers, etc.? A uh, good question. You know, it, it's a lot easier today than it used to be. When I started doing this, I didn't start getting any type of screeners or screenings 
until I got 35 to 40,000 on YouTube. 40K. And this is something that Sean and I talked about too. 40K was the first time I even remotely got contacted for a screener. Now, you know, people get screenings. And I, I think part of that is, you know, Jeremy Johns and Stuckman, Sean and myself, that door opened up. A lot, and it's a lot it's a lot more simplified to get through now because you got to jump through multiple hoops just to get there uh, for YouTubers. And I think, and, and I'm very thankful that opened up because it's, it's just a lot of an, it's a lot easier now. So I personally don't know what the number is now. I, I think it's lower thousands because I've seen a lot of people get screenings that are in the lower thousands. Um, and so for me, if you, if you're good at what you do, if you're passionate about what you do and you have something now, a lot of the times, the lower thousands, you have to have something in companion to that. You have to have a lot of followers on Twitter. You have to have a website that you're a part of. I know some YouTubers that did some work for some websites that didn't have a ton on YouTube, but they were grinding elsewhere and got access to screeners. So for me, it was like 35, 40,000. So I had to, <laughs> it was very hard for me. Um, and then in terms of in-person screenings, I just don't live anywhere close to in-person screenings. So it was hard for me to get in contact with people until two years ago. My very first screening was 1970, my very first. And then the pandemic happened. And so I didn't really get to start to go uh, to in-person screenings until like Tenet. And that, the, you know, that was a year and a half ago. So yeah, man, it's it's been a hard road. It's been a hard climb, um, but qualifying you just have to have the numbers. You have to be good at what you do. You have to know kind of what your audience is and what they want. And you have to cover a lot. So that's kind of my advice. Cover as much as you can cover, but keep the quality. Don't just focus on quantity. Great question, Zach. Uh, Matthew Merton says, love the channel. How would you rank these 2001 fantasy films? Ooh, Matthew. This is my type of question. Final Fantasy, Harry Potter, and the Sorcerer's Stone. The Lord of the Rings... Fellowship, so the first one, The Mummy Returns, Shrek, and Spirited Away. You know, Final Fantasy, is that one that I don't think I have seen? Actually, I don't think I've seen Final Fantasy, Matthew. Now, I assume Final Fantasy. Now, I think, I see Final Fantasy, I think of the video game. So, are you talking about the video game, or are we talking about a movie here? If we're talking about a movie, I haven't seen the film. So, can't speak upon Final Fantasy, but let's rank the other ones just for fun. So, I have to go Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, and then probably Shrek. I would probably put Shrek over Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Uh, it's not my favorite of the franchise. I love the film, but it's not my favorite. Mummy Returns would be... Oh, Spirit Away. Okay, okay. Restart. Spirited Away. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Shrek. No, I'm sorry. Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, Shrek, then Harry Potter, The Sorcerer's Stone, uh, then The Mummy Returns. Those are the five for me in that order. So, 27, I know it feels old. I mean, <laughs> and I can't even speak. My wife's 27. She works way more hours than I do. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, those, that would be my five in order. Matthew, that's a great question. I assume you're still talking about Final Fantasy, the, the video game. But I haven't played Final Fantasy, the video game, so I can't speak upon that. Uh, let's see. It's a more quiet live stream today, which makes sense. Yes. Yes, it is. It's, it's Easter. I did not expect a ton of people to be here today. But for y'all that's here, uh, thank you so much. Another Northman question. We're getting a lot of Northman questions today. But I'm sure a lot of you guys are just joining. If you're seeing the Northman, uh, is a review coming? Yes. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Uh, Shrek over Spirited Away. Yeah, that was before I saw Spirited Away. So Spirited Away number one. <laughs> I had to go back and redo that. Um, let's see. We've got uh, a couple more questions that I want to make sure I get to here. And let's do a refresh on the stream labs. Make sure we have no stream labs. I don't think we do. Uh, yes. So it's still the same question from Jonathan. So we will come back big screen. <laughs> Philosophers, not sorcerers. Listen, in America, it's sorcerers. That's just the way it is. So I always say sorcerers. It's it's hard for me to change that. Um, let's see. Um, we've got uh, a couple more good questions. Do you play any musical instruments? Good question from Son. But no, no, I don't. I tried to play, learn how to play guitar when I was younger. My dad can play guitar 
really well, really well, extremely well. Um, but I can't. So no, the answer is no. It's a big, big answer. Big no for me because I've tried. I'm not good at it, but my dad's really good. So if you want to hear a Burke play the guitar, uh, it's my it's my father. <laughs> Let's see here. Spirited Away over Lord of the Rings. Yes. Just Fellowship, though. I don't know if I would put it over the two towers. Pro possibly. Possibly. Uh, but Return of the King, no. No, no. Return of the King, number one, all day, every day. Let's go. Um, thoughts on the Mission Impossible franchise? Fallout is one of the greatest action movies I've ever seen. Fallout number one. I, for me, it gets better as it goes. You know, Fallout, Rogue Nation, you know, Mission Impossible 4, Mission Impossible 3, in that order, I would put in terms of quality. Sneeze. <coughs> second one's gone. No second one. <laughs> that would be my order. So, yeah, it's a franchise that gets better as they go. Absolutely love it. Um, uh, good question, though. We've got... Lo Loving that crispy 720p. Yeah, if I try to do 1080, I don't think my Wi-Fi will be able to handle that. So live stream 720, that's all you're getting. Um, it, well, I mean, my Wi-Fi is great. I have fiber wire, but they say if you if you live stream uh, with 1080 over Wi-Fi, a lot of the times it can't keep up with it. So you get 720 from me, and that's all you're getting. Uh, let's see here. We have uh, Home Sweet Home Alone versus Home Alone 4. Home Sweet Home Alone always last because that movie stinks. Um, haven't seen Morbius. May I ask if it's worse than both Venom movies? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even love the first Venom. I'm not a huge fan of the first one. I think the second one's much more self-aware. But yeah, they're, they're both a lot better than Morbius. That movie also stinks. Um, Ingrid says, I don't get the love for the jackass movies. In a way, I feel like critics haven't shown so much love to that movie, uh, have shown, sorry, have shown so much love to that movie because they don't want to show that they are not pretentious. Oh, I don't know if, I don't know if other critics feel that way. I don't feel that way. I love it. I, I love the new one. I thought it was hilarious. For me, the, the whole pretentious thing, you can throw that out the window. Now, maybe that is the case for some. Maybe that is the case for some. I don't know. I can't speak upon other critics. For me, you know, if I laugh, if I enjoy it, if I wince, but I'm still enjoying it, for me, that, that, and now, did I have to change my scoring system just a little bit? Yeah, because it's like, how my scoring system goes, I can't account for, like, cinematography with the Jackass movies, just because it's a different type of film. So, I use my entertainment factor in that portion to kind of gauge a lot of my score. Was I entertained? 100%. Now, it's not a movie for everybody. It's not. And I'm really surprised the new one got good reviews, to be honest with you. Because most of the time, I'm walking out of those films cracking up, and critics aren't feeling the same way. I just think it's something that a lot of people needed, that type of humor. Now, it, it didn't work for you, obviously, Ingrid. That's okay. But in terms of showing they're not pretentious, yeah, you can throw it out, that out the window for me, because I, I don't, I don't want to be in that category. Um, nobody please lump me in that category. I can't speak for everybody nah that ain't me if i laugh if i think it's funny i'm gonna give it a good score and i did and i thought it was freaking hilarious um but good question ingrid hey don't ever hesitate to ask me those types of questions because i appreciate it i really do um we have uh michael says bless you austin michael thanks for being here my friend uh i want eight bit austin oh mike i want that too that would be super cool <laughs> that would be awesome um big man fan says have to go great scream thank uh stream thank you so much and we're almost wrapped up as well. We, we were at 55 minute mark, so I'm just going to answer a couple more questions. Um, what is your family think of you doing this full time? Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's a good question. Uh, of course, my mom and dad were hesitant at first because it's a brand new thing. And it's like you went to college and you got a degree and you're doing YouTube. Uh, so, yeah, it was rough. It was really rough. And when I told them I was quitting my government job to do YouTube full time, they weren't entirely sure. Understandably so, though. Like, I can't give them flack for that because it's like, yeah, of course. You're you're throwing away a good job for a for a YouTube channel. So I don't blame them. Um, but they've once they learned what I did, I mean, they were on board, man. They were really on board. They're very supportive now. Um, they had to figure it out. It's not for everyone. 
It's something that's very confusing the way that it works. But once they discovered and realized what it was and what it could be and, and, and kind of what it is, they were very supportive. So for that, I appreciate them um, very much so. Uh, let's see. We have, uh, is Whiplash the most intense movie you've ever seen? I know it's in your top five. It's my third favorite movie of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, J.K. Simmons is, is sensational. I don't know if it's the most intense movie, but it is in that conversation. It is a part of that discussion. I would say that no country, um, you know, arrival in its own way can be really intense. Goodfellas is intensely hilarious, but also very intense. Like those are the types of movies that I respond to. And Whiplash is firmly in that conversation. Uh, Brandon's ASMR said, I asked you a question a while back. Could you answer it? Oh, Brandon, right, listen, man, I, I can't see all the questions. So ask it again because I missed it. It's it's um, I wish it was that easy but I can't see all the questions and I can't remember who asks what because there are so many questions. Damon with the super chat. What's up, Damon? Hey, Austin, do you have hope for the upcoming Spider-Verse Sony movie Craven, Madam Web? Oh, man. I don't know because it's like before Morbius, yes, I was like, let's see what they can do. And after Morbius, I'm like, no. Sony, no. <laughs> so now I'm just like, will they be good? I think the cast for Madam Web is phenomenal. But what is that movie going to be? I think Craven, the, the concept behind Craven is exciting. But for me, it's like Craven, Craven almost needs Spider Man to be relevant. So I just don't know. We'll have to see. I'm excited because I'm always excited for a superhero movie. I don't know. I don't know, Damon. Um, talking intense movies, fashionable changing. By the way, Good question, Dana. Uh, Fashionable Changeling says, Uncut Gems. Yeah, that's, that's in the conversation. Brandon's ASMR said, I know there's a lot of questions. Uh, what are your thoughts on Denis Villeneuve doing Cleopatra? Woo, I love Denis Villeneuve. Uh, I saw Prisoners and it was amazing. I haven't heard an update on that Cleopatra project, so I don't know if it's still in the works. But if it is in the works, that's fascinating. That time period, that character, uh, that concept is really appealing to me most of the appeal comes from Denis Villeneuve so uh, but I think it's really cool so uh, I am going to say it's exciting anything he does is exciting but I am just more excited for Dune 2 because I want to see how he ends that off and continues it um anything that Denis Villeneuve I get it does I get really excited about what do you think the biggest flaw Sony is doing right now for me Kenneth it's it's just meddling like stop meddling let them do what they're going to do. And I don't know about the movie itself, but the post credit scenes, you could tell that was Sony 100%. And I'm like, what is this? Did you just do this post credit scene for the sake of a post credit scene? I remember back in the day, Fox did that with Days of Future Past when uh, Logan comes out of the water and what's his name turns into Mystique with her eyes. I'm like, what was that? <laughs> what's the point? Uh, I think Sony just needs to stop meddling. Let directors do their thing. If they need to tie it in, give them a route. Say, here's what we're tying into. You do it, bro. You do it. Like, make your movie. That For me, it's like, haven't you learned to let these directors make their movies? I don't. I just don't understand. I don't know if I'll never understand. Ah. Ah. Um, Denis about that sand. <laughs> Denis likes sand. But Denis is a big fan of sand, unlike Anakin Skywalker. Uh, let's see. Austin, what's your favorite action series? Mission Impossible, John Wick. Those are definitely in my in my two. But, oh, I'm sorry. Not movie series. Just series. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Cobra Kai is more of a comedy than an action series. I'd have to think about that, Varney. I'd have to think about that, Um off the bat, that is really, really tough. I've heard great things about the Warrior series that I'm, I'm slowly catching up on. So far, so good with that. That's a great action series. But uh, that's definitely one that, I, that I'd have to come back to. Uh, we'll do one or two more. Uh, Macha Paka says, you missed my super chat. Oh, no. Let's go back. Oh, no. Did I miss it? Did I miss it? I'm so sorry. Scrolling, scrolling. I don't want to miss a super chat, guys. If I ever miss your super chat, please let me know. Okay, okay, okay. Yes! Thank you for letting me know. I am so sorry about that. Machapaka says, I'd also recommend The Little Prince from Mark Osborne, the director of Kung Fu Panda. Gorgeous score from Hans Zimmer. 
I didn't know Hans Zimmer did that. That is cool. I did not know. So yes, I've heard. Is that the is that the Netflix movie, right? Is that the Netflix movie? Or I saw it on Netflix or just a streaming pr platform. Uh, I've heard The Little Prince is really really good. A friend of mine said it was a beautiful like interesting movie that feels like a DreamWorks film, but I don't think it was a DreamWorks film, if I'm thinking correctly. Uh, that's definitely one. Um, so, yes, that's a great recommend uh, recommendation for anyone who enjoys those types of things. All right, let's keep going here. We have The Warrior is really good, especially uh, especially the hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's what I've heard, Farty. I need to see it. I need to see it. Um... Mike says, you missed my super chat as well. Hidden in plain sight. Mike, did I miss? Are you pulling my leg? Or, <laughs> or did you? Did I actually miss your super chat? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I got that one. Co-multi-directed movies. Mike, ask that. Unless you're pulling my leg, ask that question again. Ask that question again. Because um, I got the co-directed. Mike said, you've missed. <laughs> Dang it, Mike. You missed this super chat. <laughs> I knew you were pulling my leg. Oh, great. Um, yes, and we were talking about The Little Prince on Netflix. Thank you guys for letting me know. I do not want to miss super chats for sure. And then we have one more. Let's do this last one here before we go over to Patreon. Uh, we go over. We've got um, ah, Tom Hardy says. Oh, no, we got a super chat. Vision. Going to start a movie channel. Hey, let's go, Vision. What was this? What was that? Was I high-fiving myself? I think that's what that was. I'm tired. Um, going to start a movie channel. That is awesome. That Hey, listen. When Sean and I put our video out there, we go through kind of the steps to get started. Please check that vid out. It should be free for everybody, the portions that are coming out. Um, please check that out. Awesome stuff. Congratulations. Huge deal. We'll go to Tom Hardy for the last one, barring any more Super Chats. Most, and, and this is a great way to end off. And guys, if you're on my Patreon, hey, listen, if you're on my Patreon, please, please, please go over there right now because we're going to be starting up that companion live stream uh, just for a little bit. Hang out, answer some questions. It's Patreon Austin Burke. It will be for all patrons, um, so that companion live stream will be coming right after this. It's much more laid back and relaxed, so we can hang out on there. Um, also, before I answer this last question, TikTok. Austin loves, loves movies. I do the TikToks now. Twitter, at The Birkinator. Uh, the Discord link should be in the description. And um, thank you for all of the super chats today. Thank you for all the likes today, man. Let's see how many likes we ended up with. Let's see how many likes we ended up with. We got 87, y'all. Almost to 100. Great stuff, man. I love you guys know my goal on these is 100 likes. So we got 87. We'll probably reach that 100 mark after it posts. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of that. But let's go back to that question. Most anticipated movie for the rest of the year. Um, ah, Man. Okay. Killers of the Flower Moon. Spider-Man, and this isn't in a specific order, Killers of the Flower Moon, Babylon, Spider-Verse 2, Doctor Strange, uh, and then probably David Fincher's The Killer. We don't know if that's coming out yet. We don't know if that's coming out yet, but it's definitely in that conversation. So, uh, yeah, those are my five. Scorsese, come on, y'all know Scorsese and Damien Chazelle. Anytime they have a movie coming out, I love me some strange. <laughs> Mike said strange, little Doctor Strange. Can't wait to see that. Uh, how many TikToks do you do? I try to do one every two or three days, or maybe one every day, but one every two or three days at least. And then here's a cool one. I know I keep getting the questions. Uh, my unofficial franchise, Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane, Cloverfield Paradox, Super 8, Arrival, Science, Close Encounters, War of the Worlds. Oh, my God. The multiverse of madness right there. And then we have um, Matt Loves Movies. I've, I've mentioned it, but yeah, Northman Review hopefully coming tomorrow. Guys, that's it. That's 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 all we <laughs> Alicia said. I hit the dislike button by mistake. No, that's okay, Alicia. Don't worry about that. Um, I've never proven that that hurts the algorithm as long as as long as it goes away. I don't think it hurts it. So thank you for that nonetheless. Uh, and let's see what the final total was. I believe we got close. 90. 
97 likes. So thank you guys so much for being here. Go over to Patreon. We're going to be starting that up really soon. If you guys are on my Patreon, um, and this is just for everybody who's on there, uh, go on over there. We're going to be starting that up. We can have some, uh, maybe some more interesting discussions. Did I ever start my music? Let me know if the music sounds good during these live streams. Uh, but I appreciate you all so much for being here. We're going to do more of these 100%. And uh, tomorrow, be on the lookout because we have my review for the Northman coming out on this channel. Uh, the notification bell, all of those things is going to be fantastic. You guys are the best. Thank you again. Love you all so much. And uh, I'll see I see everybody on Patreon here in about five minutes. <laughs>